Hello everybody, it's Dr. Steve with another episode of Core Wellness TV and another Garden Cast edition. Uh, well, yesterday we spent some time uh, going out to the horse farm, getting some horse manure, and also I constructed our new compost pile yesterday. You can see I went ahead and decided to put the middle uh, divider in just so we can have the older or the newer compost stuff. This is where we stuff in our, our, uh, our kitchen waste and anything new, like Rebecca's been cutting back some... Uh, butterfly bushes and some other plants and then the on the left side this is this is the side we want to to start using this year as soon as possible so this is the more mature pile and then the less mature pile and right here this pile is the pile of horse manure and I've been uh, starting the process of amending our our weedless garden here so to speak let's move over here and just back up and see what we got what I did is I raked back, well, in the, in the, uh, what was, when it was cold, about a month ago, I raked up all our leaves and mulched them with our mulching mower and put them all over the garden just to kind of keep the soil warm and moist and uh, just to also uh, stimulate and nurture the microorganisms in the soil through the breakdown of all the processes. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about, a little bit more about those microorganisms because they're really important, especially for uh, getting minerals and water into the root system. So I'll talk about that in a second. But what I did is, in order to, to put this new horse manure in, and <laughs> a little known fact is if I see a big hunk like this, I'm just breaking it down. And it's amazing that basically it comes down, it's just, you know, horses don't eat anything but plants. And this is the ultimate in recycling of nitrogen. The nitrogen goes into the animals, and then they poop it out, and then we get to put it on our on our soil. So I've been kind of breaking that up, so it'll be easier to get into the soil. So anyway, that's how I did that. And then you can see I raked back all of the the ground up uh, leaves from this fall. And I raked all this back. And one thing I'm doing differently this year is I'm leaving a lot of the root structures in the ground from last year. Uh, reason in the past I would have pulled all the roots and kind of kind of dug things up. You can see, like this is I think from our uh, our um, kale patch from last year, our lacinato kale. But down in the roots, I'll go, I'll go ahead and pull this one up so you can see. Down in the roots, uh, roots attract, actually roots secrete these, uh, well these secretions called, um, actually I wrote a couple of these things down, the, uh, what's it called, I didn't write that down, well the process of rhizodeposition is what it's called, roots are, you know, another name for roots is rhizomes, and what they do is they put out these secretions and they attract these fungus that's in the soil, these myco, mycorrhizo uh, fungi and the fungi go and uh, colonize the roots and whenever this without this mutualistic relationship of the uh, fungus in the soil and the roots you don't get to the roots don't absorb as many minerals and they don't absorb water as effectively so that's the awesome awesome uh, the way it should be you know mutualistic relationships symbiotic relationships in the soil. Now this is probably the third or fourth year that I have not tilled and that's the reason. And last year I had much less insect damage I noticed and especially on my uh, my uh, cruciferous vegetables they had a lot less uh, cabbage looper damage to them and I also planted uh, some companion plants along the back. I planted some uh, spearmint which this right here is a spearmint. I kind of marked them and because the spearmint, uh, the spearmint blooms attract uh, tachnid flies and some other uh, parasitic wasps and things like things like that. And the parasitic wasps uh, go and par parasitize off of the uh, cabbage looper. So I'm trying to develop a better balance. So anyway, that's what's going on with the roots. And what I did is I pulled all the, I pulled all this back, and now I am just basically amending the soil with organic horse manure. 
just like that. What I'm going to do is just uh, rake this all in. And of course, Dr. Hoffman is bracing and stiffening through his core. <laughs> Always, and you know I talk about the hip hinge a lot, and that's how you can mix this in. Anytime you bend, if you put a round round into your back, you're gonna damage yourself. So always keep your core tight, your pelvic floor on, like those muscles I talked about when I, when I was snow shoveling not too long ago. At least that was, that was just like two weeks ago, it seems like. So we are in spring, and thank goodness. But uh, yeah, good body mechanics, especially when you start to garden, because you end up, you know, a little bit ago, I went through the process of going through and, uh, you know, pulling out all of the, the little bits of clumps of grass that had started to grow in just so we don't have to deal with that to start with for this season. And I've also been looking for dandelions. I'm cultivating dandelions, okay? You understand that? We don't need to spray them. We need to cultivate them and eat them in great abundance. They are absolutely fabulous alkalizing foods for our bodies and really good for our livers for detoxification. So anytime I see a good, nice, healthy, uh, a good, healthy dandelion plant, I leave it so I can always just pick it along with my other greens as I make a salad through the garden. So, and you can see I let some uh, spinach winter over and I have uh, amended that. I've addressed them with a little bit of horse manure as well. And I let a collard patch winter over and I thinned it out so I'll have some early collards hopefully whenever everything starts really jumping back into action. And then the other patch that I left is what I was my favorite thing last year, and that was the parsley. Man, the parsley was amazing. We made so much juice and green smoothies out of this parsley. So I'm gonna let that go too. And see, so we got a little few things to start with. Of course, other things will pop up. I left, I left uh, a, a mescaline mix patch here that will may pop up may not but whatever you know I'm just gonna plan around it and whatever comes up comes up and uh, that's really the essence of how to do a no-till garden you kind of just let things come up as they may you don't want to try and uh, put too much control over it or else uh, just get disappointed so kind of letting things pop up as they will and I'm gonna be getting some plants some uh, red sales lettuce and some black seeded Simpson lettuce usually I get that at Bunton Seeds over in Louisville and I get an early start by plugging some plants into the ground and we start, you know, we're eating lettuce out of our garden pretty well by, uh, you know, mid-April. So uh, that's just a little bit of what's going on and we thought you want to see what we did with the horse manure and what's going on with the garden. And uh, so that's it for today. Uh, just remember to think good thoughts, eat good food, and keep moving functionally and effectively so you don't hurt yourself. See you next time.